All right, I told you I'd give you one more turbine today, and uh, it's going to be two videos in one day, which is pretty rare for me. Um, so uh, this is this is the newest version I've been working on, um, and uh, I'm really kind of excited about it. <clears throat> you can see it's like the other one, like the you know there's the bare bones one I'm going to offer on eBay, and then there's this one which is which is new, um, it's just a new uh, new turbine framing and all that that I've got here, and. Um, <clears throat> Still, same same uh, dimensions of rotors, seven and seven eighths OD, um, and uh, the gap. It's a set gap at uh, one inch, one point, uh, and seven hundred and thirty thousandths uh, approximately for the for the gap that's set based on half inch magnets and uh, the stator that you choose, which should be right around a half inch. Maybe you can go just a touch over that, and then a very narrow gap on either side. Um, it's very very accurate, so there's no end play. Uh, no run out. Um, obviously, it's there is some, but it's in the most minuscule amount. This one, uh, this one uh, turned out really well. It is uh, <clears throat> unlike the other one; it has no furling. It goes straight into the wind, and it is on a full uh, double ball bearing pivot. So you can see that thing is just going to uh, just turn nice and easy, and uh, and I'm going to put a big long tail on it. So I just wanted to show you guys this one because it's uh, it's kind of new. And, and there's a few other unique little changes on it, a few unique things. Uh, for one, the shaft. Um, you'll see here, um, <clears throat> here's, a, here's one of the shafts. It's, it's actually set in there just like that. Uh, the magnet rotors, you know this if you've been watching my videos, this is one inch on that side, it's 25 millimeter all the way through here to the bearings. And uh, this collar is 25 millimeter and this back uh, faceplate of sorts is also 25 millimeter with a set screw. This one's getting a second set screw in there. But then what I did was I, I, I necked it down to 17 millimeter and it still has that, that stud for the little cone on there. So you can get any conventional, all those hubs off of eBay, they're all based on 17 millimeter. This one is, um, this one's a Missouri Wind and Solar. Um, I haven't used it yet, I'm excited about it. I got a, um, these Falcon Mach 4 blades which are, I think they're 39 inches each. This whole thing can be like 80, 80 uh, I think it's 81 inches diameter. So you just imagine uh, what that's going to be like. But the idea is you're going to be able to put different, different hubs on there. And, uh, and there's, you know, there, there's a lot of other possibilities. And, uh, you know, clockwise, counterclockwise, whatever you want. This is a clockwise thread in here, but um, what's happening here is I've got uh, uh, basically a 5 16 uh, coarse thread going down into both spindles on that side. So when you pull this together on this side, you're, this, this collar is fixed with that stud going all, with that screw going, bolt going all the way down into the shaft as I talked about earlier. And then when you pull this together, it pulls the, the plates and the spacers, there's two spacers, and then that, whole, that little end piece there, pull that all together against that. And on the front side, it pulls um, the bearing races, the spacer in between the bearings, uh, inner races, and everything. It just pulls all that together, and then you can lock everything down with set screws. I even went so far as to, uh, you know, I've got set screws on, on some places where I don't need them. I've got set screws on this inner collar here as well. Um, so that those can go in, you're not showing them there, but that can go in. And um, like on the other one, I mentioned I do have. Um, I want to keep the tooling simple when you're when you're out in the field, um, trying to you know put it together or take it down or do any kind of maintenance on it. You've got three wrenches that you're going to need. Um, it's basically a seven sixteenths, a half inch, and a, a nine sixteenths. And uh, by no coincidence, you know, a 7 16 and a 9 16 are kind of like an 11 and um, a 14 millimeter, respectively. So it's kind of, you know, I, that, that's on purpose, um, like that. So, and plus, it's, it's easy for me to thread and do all that other stuff. Now, you see here, I've also got a frame piece that cuts down to the back there. I put a radius in that, um, made them on a ring roller. And I've got this piece and, and one on the other side, and that's uh, that was the idea is to have shrouding there, so that you can protect 
your stator, you know, magnets and wires and all that sort of stuff. And uh, I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do that yet, but, um, you know, maybe like uh, Chris Olson uh, has Plexi where he's formed it with heat, I believe, over a pipe or something. I mean, I may do something like that, I don't know. Um, and there may even be something that goes in the front here to prevent the, the, the ice and the rain from just coming straight in there. But um, anyway, I, I don't want to get too ahead of it. At this point, um, it's, it's, uh, I, really, I really like this design. Um, I did, I did make a provision for that third magnet plate, so you can have two stators. And that, I think, is kind of the exciting thing about having this straight shot, as I'm going to call it, um, wind turbine where it just goes right into the wind. You're going to have two stators that produce power and go into either a battery bank or a grid tie inverter. This is my theory. Okay, um, you know, the first one is going to be for the low winds. The, uh, the startup through perhaps, you know, 25 miles per hour, 30 miles per hour, and although that is a, a heavy duty wind. And the second stator, um, once I add that to it, is going to be for, you know, it's, it's going to be for, for uh, the, the brake, but not just brake, it's going to feed into a, a larger grid tie perhaps and, and run in so that both stators are, it doesn't just, you know, heat a resistor, it doesn't furl out, it just, it, it takes it. And so the idea is um, I've, I've welded every seam in this, I've, I've built it heavy duty here. Um, everything's eighth inch wall or you know, minimum eighth inch wall uh, steel, you know, quarter inch in places, you know, places, but uh, this is uh, this is meant to survive a high, high wind. At least that's that's what I'm aiming for. So now um, I just wanted to show you what I was working on for this next one and I, and, and it is, uh, it's one I'm really quite excited about putting up. It's probably going to be the next one that I put up and uh, uh, I want to test it out first. So just wanted to give you a, a glance at what I was working on, um, and I've got a <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> two more things I want to show you about it. The bearing pivot um, is my own system I've come up with here. Hopefully you can see this um, uh, camera here. Basically, um, there are two bearings down at the bottom here that this is this is on, and uh, I've got a frame, a second frame here. You can see I've got this um, two and three quarter Schedule 80 pipe bored out to fit this bearing. Right now I've got two of these pressed in there. So when you so when you basically uh, what you'll do right here is get your tower, and I've got I've got a piece here. You can't see it in the vise, but I've I've taken this down and I've I've pressed on a nice another piece of pipe. And there'll be another thick sort of washer there. Now that pipe is going to rest up against the inner race of that bearing there, and there's going to be two bearings, right? Now that is going to go down inside a piece of uh, what I, uh, is going to end up being two-inch Schedule 80, because um, this is this thing is about 30 pounds, okay? And it's going to get a tail and blades and stator magnets, blah blah blah. It's getting heavier, and so <clears throat> the, the the tower must be substantial. And so this, this will be um, put down, this will fit down inside a Schedule 82 inch and then it's going to get welded in there. And uh, that's, just the, that's just the way it's got to be so that when you come up with your, your wind turbine, you're just going to come up to it as it's down and, and drop it right on there. And that pin, I'm, gonna, I'm calling this a pin, it's one and three a thick, I mean it's not really a pin, but um, those two bearings are going to slide down on there. I imagine two of them there, and then you know the upper one is just going to come right to the top. And then I've got this washer. Um, it is indeed a washer, so uh, that I've drilled out on the index to match those three three bolt holes. Again, that'll be seven sixteenths. And then um, you can spin this around and tighten down each one of those, and that will prevent the wind turbine from popping off the tower. Um, <clears throat> I, I mean, it's secured on there. It's fastened, obviously. I, you know, you're 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 building. A, how do they put it? That you're you're building a church for Easter Sunday. Um, in here, this I'm talking about. You, you know, you're building this for that freak wind event that's going to test the limits. And uh, and I, I've uh, you know I've, I've made a few turbines. I'm not, I call myself an expert or anything, but I've seen <laughs> I've seen a wind turbine in a in a bad wind, and you know, uh, 
how how easily they can be destroyed. And so I just uh, I just assume build it, overbuild it, and then I go from there. So um, that's a bit wordy, but isn't that cool? If I don't mind saying so, um, this is this is I think one of my favorites so far, and uh, I'm probably going to continue with this design. And uh, I just wanted to show you all. So there it is. Two videos in one day. That's a record. Um, please ask questions um, and make comments. And uh, and again, you guys had some very encouraging words for me on my last video on that bare bones unit. So I do I do appreciate it. And uh, I better get back to work. I don't put up a lot of videos, but I like to kind of keep myself busy in here. So as soon as I hang this thing up and upload this without much uh, fussy editing, I'm just going to get back to work. So thank you guys again very much. Uh, happy Thanksgiving coming up here, and uh, until next time.